this is segment three bits or also I will later tell you a second name that just has in the name it spoils the solution for example what we can do with segment trees is given a sequence add something to interval and for some interval find the sum of elements sum of AI I usually call this type of thing plus and plus because the update is plus the add something and query is give me the sum also we can do plus max which is add something to interval and give me the maximum in interval this is easy as well for all of those it's both update and query give me something is about interval we can also do max max uh, maximize interval with something and give me maximum of interval so this would be for i in some interval ai is max of ai and given x but there is one type that isn't possible to do with lazy propagation at least not without segment three bits and that is max plus so mm, something like if you have three one two four and there is a query maximize everything with three let's say for the whole interval say that every ai is max of ai and three that would change one into three and two into three and then give the sum of the whole interval uh, i usually think about segment trees i already told you that yesterday that in the root when there is a query about the whole interval give me the sum of the whole interval we cannot go deeper in the tree that would be linear if you go to every leaf we just need to here store the answer the same for updates update must be able to do something in the root because if it goes to all the leaves it's linear so we need to be able using this initial sequence three one two four to store such values in the root that it will tell me depending on with what i maximize it will give me the new answer the sum of values and this is impossible it's impossible to compress information like that as in o of one values so that the root would know it instead we will um, even if the interval is about the whole from one to n interval so even if we should only know the answer in the root we will still sometimes go down but we want the amortized complexity to be small to not to be n times q and segment three bits also can be let's say called three of second max no three of second max and this name spoils the algorithm the algorithm is that in every vertex we store um, let's say that here we have second min max let's assume that i talked about minimizing because then it's easier actually let's make a new new page if queries are a of i is minimum of a of i and some value x then in every vertex what i values that i store are max uh, comma second max call it max 2 and sum uh, now what happens if let's say the sequence this is the root and it represents the sequence like one three five eight if i have the query that minimizes everything with say six x equals six then the only thing that changes 
x equal to 6, we'll change this 8 into a 6. And it's very easy to say uh, what the new sum will be. Because I will just say that then sum minus equal max minus x. Um, the previous max was 8, x is 6, so sum is decreased by 2. This is what happens if um, if what? If max 2 is smaller than x, smaller equal max. Or maybe just smaller than max. If this condition happens, then we just do that. If x is greater equal max, do nothing. Because the biggest, if biggest value was 8, and now we want to minimize every value with 13, nothing happens. And the one last possibility is that x is smaller equal max 2. And then we say go recursively. That's the whole algorithm. With one tiny detail that we will add here. Maybe you already see what we need. And it turns out that this is n log n, amortized n log n in total. Actually, we want to say the complexity is of n plus q times log of n. Mm. And what is, why mm, this is not quadratic? Because every time when we go recursively, when we do this point, instead of just finishing here, we go deeper. This means that two values will become equal to each other. And that cannot happen all the time. In the, our initial sequence, if we minimize with, let's say, 4, then what will happen is 5 and 8 will be both changed to 4. And now only once more it, we can merge that with a 3, let's say if we minimize with 2 or with 3, and then once more we can minimize with 1 or with 0. We will use some so-called potential value for that, for the proof of complexity. Mm. I already, we already used it in Liepotica problem that if there is a query about some interval, the two, uh, the first and the last vertex give us some interesting vertices that will be visited. And those, there are log of n of them. I want to say that for each other vertex, like this guy, if I visit it, it means that some two values will glue together. And for every vertex, the potential value, potential value of vertex is defined as the number of different values in the subtree. And this potential will give me the proof for amortized complexity. I said, mm, for sure I will visit blue vertices, but there is only log of n. That's fine. Of them. For each vertex that is here in the green part in between, of course, for each vertex outside of those, uh, nothing will happen. We will not go, the query doesn't change at all those vertices. For each green thing, the fact that I go deeper, that I go recursively, so I have two more recursive calls, means that here I had something like 1, 3, 6, 8, and I do it, let's remember, only if x is smaller equal max 2, which means that 
those two values will become the same value. The number of distinct values will, uh, in this subtree, subtree of this vertex, will decrease by at least one, which is magic and it's awesome for this uh, topic. I mean, uh, it's amazing that this happens, and because of that, we will have just n log n. Uh, so, if potential potential in this vertex will decrease by at least one, maybe several values will be merged together if we minimize with let's say two but it will decrease by at least one maximum will merge with second maximum the initial potential let's say the sum of p p0 of every vertex v the sum over all the vertices v is at most n log n because this, for even if all the numbers are different in the leaves, the sum over all the sizes of subtrees is n log n. Because uh, one solution for that is that we have n times 1 plus n over 2 times 2, n over 4 times 4, n over 8 times 8, and so on. So in every layer, the sum of potentials there cannot be can be at most n and their log n layers that's one proof the second is that every leaf adds plus one to potential to everything to the, to the root assuming that everything is different this means the initial sum of potentials is at most n log n and every query i will say increases uh, so plus Query increases potential by plus log. Uh, why? Because when there is a query for each of those blue vertices, something might happen only in one child. Let's focus on this red guy. If previously he had four and four, but we minimize only uh, the left guy with two, then potential increased by one. So what happens is that uh, for each of those blue vertices, it, it's possible that new number X appears, because remember, if we minimize everything with X, this might be a new value that appears in a subtree, but this is the only new value that can appear. So the number of different things that appear in the subtree of every blue vertex is like one. There can be new x and that's it. For green vertices, those that are in the middle, for sure everything there... Uh, so we said that... Uh, we go somewhere recursively extra only if it will merge two things, if those two will change to x. So this helps us, this decreases. We prove that new query increases the potential by at most log, by plus one for every blue vertex. The initial one is n log n. So in total, the total increases of potentials sum up to n log n plus for this q log n. And every time we have extra recursive call, we decrease. Uh, actually, we have two recursive calls, but thanks to that, we decrease the total potential by at least one. And the potential cannot go below zero. So the biggest number of times it might happen is n log n plus q log n. And that's the amortized complexity. And the problem that we can solve now in n plus q times log is there are queries for some interval every element to change to minimum of itself and x and for some interval give me the sum of values. Now question for you. Think for a moment what is missing here. So actually this thing doesn't work in some special case. What is that case? 
we cannot just say that we uh, the sum is decreased by max minus x in this case where uh, x is between max and second max now is a moment for you to get what is missing number of max exactly the thing is that array may be uh, this may be already something like one three five eight eight we cannot then just say that if we minimize with seven we cannot go recursively because the number of distinct elements will not change what we need to say is that each of those maximas it will change to seven so that missing value here is count max and then here i had this arrow we should here say times count max and now we're good to go um, this is a complete solution it's now time for questions uh, if you don't understand something make sure to um, get that now ask a question or just also you can ask me about for like five or ten minutes to think about the whole thing to analyze it and then we will move to harder examples could you repeat why do we need number of maxes yeah you can just think about let's say the root and if the root represents the sequence like this uh, and could you please again prove amortized complexity okay uh, first, why do we need the number of maxes? If the root represents a sequence like 1, 3, 5, 8, 8, and we minimize with 7, we cannot say that we recursively go uh, deeper, because that could repeat a lot of times. What happens if, if the sequence is 1, 2, 3, 5, and 100, 100, then possibly we minimize with 99, then 98, 97, and so on, a lot of times. Mm, and we shouldn't go recursively each time. It's very easy to update this to just 99s uh, by updating the sum. If we change, if we here have maximum equal to 100, and we minimize that with x equal to, let's say, 70, then the sum will decrease by 30 twice. That is why sum is decreased by maximum minus x times the count. And here we store, when we, I said we store the second max, this one, this is biggest value different than maximum. So for a sequence like this, this is second max. We choose it in such a way that we only go recursively deeper if max2 and max will become the same number. The number of distinct numbers decreases. Mm. Okay, and can you please again prove amortized complexity? Uh, I can talk about it for a moment. For segmentary queries, there are some vertices that we for sure can visit. Those are on the path if queries about interval from A to B, then as with blue, I marked vertices on a path from A to the root and from B to the root. Just any segment tree visits those for sure. There are a log of n of them. And when you have query that minimizes the interval, for each of those, possibly in its subtree, new value x appears. So the potential, the number of these different vali values in this subtree it can increase by one because new value x will appear. For example, maybe before that it was four and four and now you minimized some part with value two. This is what I showed on the right. Uh, so this means the total potential will, will increase by log. Mm. And so for things that are on the left or on the right, those things aren't affected at all by, about the because of the query those are outside the interval that is changed and for things inside 
we only go recursively deeper if that would combine two things, what means the potential will decrease by one. And that is the number of extra steps in that green area is equal to the um, for each of those steps we get minus one to potential. The potential cannot go below zero. If if there are q things that happen and each of those things we get for each of those we get plus log to some value, then the number of st green steps that happen those extra necessary steps that increase our complexity and that's bad uh, for each of them we decrease the value by one because here we increased it in total by at most q times log this is the limit for the number of st extra steps in the green area and i also said that the initial po total potential is n log n. this is f the sum for every vertex the size of its subtree this is pessimistic case where the initial sequence consists of different values. Could you also explain how to do lazy propagation there? Uh, we have... Um, what we have? Uh, we minimize with x. So if that happens in a root, we need to have value that will be... the whole subtree will be minimized with. So I think we need that in implementation, right? Yes, we do. Mm. I would store values max, max2, sum, count max, and also the value lazy or lazy mean. And then the only thing that we propagate is that value lazy. When, let's say in the root, you got minimize sum, everything with seven, and you, s you don't go recursively because it was smaller than maximum but greater than maximum 2 then just lazy still stores that value 7 later when you need to push down you push down that 7 to say that everything there below should be minimized with 7 mm. yeah uh, I think that's it of course, also we need a merge, but merge consists of some ifs. Uh, we have maximum, second maximum, then maximum will be maximum of two um, children. Second maximum, I think, should be computed with some ifs, because each of your children has maximum and second maximum. You need to find the biggest value different than max. Uh, you need to also decide what it is for leaves. Likely for leaves you want it to be minus infinity. Uh, I'm not sure. The sum is just sum of two children. Count max is um, for each of children where its maximum is equal to yours, you add the, its own count max. And lazy is zero or like minus one, some fake value if after you merged. That being said, I think that the last value lazy can be avoided because it's just that when we have, let's say, maximum equal to 8 and we change it down to 7, then later when we want to go down, we should take this value 7, that is the current max, and propagate it down saying this is your limit because I was already minimized with 7 apparently. You cannot have values bigger than that that should be enough to so after changing maximum to something smaller max and lazy would be anyway equal mm. but i'm just guessing now i'm not 100 percent sure any more questions Now we will talk about something harder, that is, uh, we would add a query that, the update, that 
increases everything in interval by something and now this is very bad for us because there are cases like one two three four comma one two three four where if the root of segment tree built on that sequence has potential for the number of different values below and after you change this interval plus four this number will increase by n or n over two if from four it will change to eight so the potential that we used a moment ago could be increased by plus n and that's bad we will use a different potential mm, and that new thing that's how you analyze amortized complexity in general if in two pointers it's very easy if you have two pointers that will move only to the right you know that each of them will increase by at most one and at the end they are n so this is why the complexity is o of n in segment trees where we only sometimes go recursively deeper and we want to find we want to then find some potential that will then decrease and we want to find the limit for the number of increases that's just more complicated version of analysis of complexity of two pointers mm, we need potential value that will work here in all the updates including the addition to interval it should and still we have also updates that work like that mean of ai and x and give me the sum of ai in some interval we have now three types of queries mm. what will be our new potential it's very very hard to get that uh, like yourself without knowing it the potential is the following mark a vertex if maximum if in its two children are different if here we have five and three and here we have say two and five then this vertex is not marked it is marked if maximum of left and right child are different then we say that this vertex is marked and what will happen is uh, only some new vertices will be marked and we want to use it to our advantage uh, there will be two uh, two possible analyses here one cares about the sum of depths of marked vertices mm, but we will talk about it later for now the definition is vertex is marked if its two children have different maximum in its subtrees and we care about the number of marked vertices we want to say that when we could do some extra operations because we do um, we unnecessarily go down to this green area in the middle then the potential decreases why mm. what happens uh, again let's think about this maybe i will copy big segment tree let me move it okay it works No, I cannot make it bigger. Uh, okay, good enough. If we have some query, the some vertices are marked blue. Those we will visit for sure. and we don't want to go recursively too much in the middle but what happens in the middle is um, if here the left there is five and two 
the maximum in left and right child. For example, five and two. If we minimize with say three, then we will go recursively only to the left child. We wonder about cases where we go recursively to two children, because this gives us something new. Like it's okay if uh, if we go from each of those blue vertices to the side and just go down to the leaf. From each of blue vertices, the path to the leaf has length log, so the total complexity will be log square. And uh, I wonder when from something we'll go to two children. That maybe give, will give me extra n calls and it, everything will be linear. But I will go to both only if they are both bigger than three. Let's say they are five and four. If I minimize everything in this subtree with a three, then I will indeed go to each of them separately. But then this vertex, it had two different maxima in children. Uh, so it was marked and now it will not be marked anymore. So for an extra recursive, for extra log of work, because I will now go not only to the, let's say, left child and then down, uh, but also to the right child and maybe down. Mm. I get plus log operations, but vertex is not marked anymore. And again, we think which vertices can become marked so in what vertices something different happened for two children and that happens i think only for the blue vertices for each of those it might happen that so let's focus on let's say this guy if we add plus 10 to interval then its left child might uh, get this plus to maximum and maybe its maximum will be bigger and then maybe this vertex will become marked. For every other thing, uh, so for everything here that is in, in between, if we add plus 10 to everything, then the left max maximum increases by 10 and right maximum increases by 10, so they stay relatively the same. And everything outside of the blue interval is not changed at all. So every query will give us plus log marked vertices. And when marked vertex disappears, for that we get plus log recursive calls. And this is why complexity will be log square. Mm. Once again, for each of log blue vertices, we can go to the side when we have the query of the second type because we go to minimize some values there. Like there was a sequence 1, 3, 8, 8 and we minimize that 8 with 2, something like that. We go recursively there. Uh, but then either we will go to only one child later and that's just a path of length log up to a leaf or we will go to both children if they're both had maximum greater than x, like five and four are both greater than three, and then the, this vertex, this one, will stop being marked. It was marked because maximum in left and right child was different. Now it will be the same, it will be equal to three. And that's, uh, so, when marked vertex disappears we do plus log operations and for each new query at most plus log new marked vertices appears so it will give us plus log square to the complexity every query and that's the complexity mm, plus the number of initially marked vertices is most, at most n obviously so the complexity will be O of n plus q log times log. 
n plus q log is the total number of things that become marked. Initially there are n marked, plus each of q queries give us, gives us q new marked vertices, those on the blue path. And for each marked vertex, when it disappears, it will, it will give us plus log operations at most. The complexity is n log n plus q log square n. Questions? And some other explanation that you can read about in code forces is about tracking the sum of depths of all the marked vertices, but it gives us the same complexity and I think it's more complicated. It is roughly the same thing. Uh, so, and this analysis, it, the thing with marked vertices, where two maxima are different, it will work with a lot of other queries. But this is a good example, the plus equal x thing is a good example because the previous analysis didn't work and this one does. Okay, there are two remaining things for the lecture. One is how to keep track of so-called historic, um, historic information. For every vertex we want the maximum so far there. And the second one is um, generally way, way to think about these hard segment tree problems. So first maybe the historic information because it's still about segment tree bits. What are queries that we should answer? Historic information. And in this block, that the block is for example below the video in the description. Uh, there are links. Uh, this one is called a simple introduction to segment tree bits in code forces. But there's a link below the video. The queries are, and here's the link to some problem that you can solve for that. It's in Chinese apparently, but it isn't a big deal, I guess. Uh, there are five kinds of operations. Everywhere x is a positive integer. Add x to everything, change x to everything, and change element to maximum of this element minus x and zero. Then query for a. Uh, the if element and query for uh, for some element of maximum of there so far. This will be just example plus there are some more queries I guess that we can handle. Mm, math processing error. It works now. Mm, so you can implement that problem later. There are three types of queries that we need to handle. And there is some extra b that is at every position maximum so far. So possible scenario is that we have, let's say, 1, 2, 7, 3. Uh, then <laughs> we change, let's say, to this interval we add 2. 1, 4, 9, 5. Then in this interval we change everything to 5 or to 6. 1, 6, 6, 5. And here we subtract 3, but we maximize with 0. This is what the statement said. 0, 3, 6, 5. And to everything we add 1. 1, 4, 7, 6. There are queries like that. And there are also queries, give me the ith element, like for this one, say 7. And also give me the maximum element that was at that position. Right now at this position the maximum would be 6. Here we had maximum. For this position the maximum would be 9. For this one it would be 6. So at different moments there are maxima. And this makes lazy propagation extremely hard. Because we cannot just say for this interval everything changes to 5 and that's it, or we increase 5, then we subtract 3 and do something. We need to, we would need to go to the leaves and update the historical maximum there. And the, the so-called historic info technique for the segment trees allows us to take care of that. The thing is called historic or maybe historical. I will check. Mm, the thing is called historic information. Formation. 
what is it? Mm, the thing is that each of those queries turns out to be mm, expressed as one the same query. We had ai plus equal x. We had ai is what max zero and ai minus x. Also ai is x. It turns out that each of those can be written in the same way. That is ai is max of some constant c1 and ai plus c2. This is a general thing that applies to each of those three queries. If we here put c1 to be minus infinity, max of minus infinity and ai plus let's say 5, then we get the first type of the first query. We just increase 5 uh, by 5. The minus infinity doesn't matter. If c1 is 0 and c2 is minus x, then we get the second type. And the third one is um, where c1 is what? c1 is x. So this is max of x and ai minus infinity. minus infinity. So this is general thing that we have and we will try to take care of this query. And just, if the problem was more straightforward it would just tell us that in every query we are given c1 and c2 and you need to handle something like that plus the historically maximum value at every position. Sorry, what an array C is. This is not an array, this is a constant. I said that each of those three queries can be actually expressed as the same type of query. For some constant C1 and some constant C2, uh, this will simulate all of those. That is, instead of saying that, instead of having AI plus equal five, I will say that it is query ai is maximum of minus infinity and ai plus 5. Instead of having, so this is just the same thing, this is also maximum of something, comma ai plus something, trivially. And here I wrote what is the last thing. Each of three queries can be expressed as ai change to maximum of ai and plus something and something. The values c are constants. Uh, how to think about it differently? If we can handle this query, because we already know a solution for that, then we can solve this problem with three types of queries. Because each of those three types is just a special version of our one big query, max of c1 and ai plus c2. Mm. The block also so the block mentions some other RIC later like here, but don't worry about it now. I'm using a different C, just some constant. Oh here, after each operation add C by A. Don't worry about it. We will focus on this thing for now. And we want to now solve this thing. So this is still called historic information. So we have AI is max of some value, say uppercase A and AI plus B. Uh, how does this function look like? Depending on the previous AI, the new AI must look like that. If this is, if blue thing is function AI plus B, and this function is just something equal to A, then this is the shape of function max of something and X plus something. And <coughs> the thing is, after we Mm, this is a function. This is a function that we can 
combine with itself and it will be still the same type of function. Mm. If we have some x that you we have some x that we don't know and we know that first it changes to max of 3 and x plus 1 and later if we have here some let's say y already that is this max of 3 and x plus 1 it changes to max of 10 and y plus 4 then from those two we can figure out the initial x changes to what final value mm. uh, how to uh, how to do it here okay what happens is if this was already function max of 3 and x plus 1 and now we need to apply the new thing max of 10 and y plus 4 uh, what happens is that all the thing we maximize with 10 plus we can have the previous value plus 4 which is something like this and this new shape is the new function We can also figure out the same thing with formulas. I will try to do it uh, for that I need. It will be more convenient for me to type. Uh, if I have, so x changes to max of say 3 and x plus 1. And now this new thing y changes to max of 10 and y plus 4. So this will be y and I plug it here. Then I know that in total after those two operations x changes to max of 10 and I'm just plugging here y max of 3 x plus 1 plus 4. I can transform this a little bit. I have here max of 7 and x plus 5, I got rid of 4. And I have now maximum three elements 10, 7, and x plus 5. So I just have 10 and x plus 5. I know that after applying these two things, in total I could just apply that. Uh, and generally, this will be. Um, we can even figure out the exact formula. If you want to first apply max of uh, say uppercase a and x plus uppercase b later apply max of c and this plus d then you can put d inside and now you have max of c a plus d and that um, so from values a b c d you can figure out that uh, so let's just let's say that new value a, e is defined as max of c and a plus d then this is the thing so the, we have maximum of constant and x plus some other constant maybe this can be f we managed to combine the function with itself and in a similar uh, way we can combine also the historic maximum and it's just some coincidental property of this function function max of constant comma x plus constant because it turns out that it also has the same shape it, because if the function was a function that from x gives us new value max of x plus something comma something if it was first let's say like that then the second function is like that third one is maybe like that then the maximum will be the same shape and again you can go through formulas to get the same thing this means 
that to solve this problem without historic information, you should just store the current a and b, and when you need to combine the function with new function, new query, you use the thing that I got here, that uh, from a, b, c, d, we will get m values a and f, e and f, defined like that. And for historic information, you will get similar formula. Because uh, combining this function with itself also gives something of this type, the same function, and also maximum of those functions is still the same shape. It's still a form maximum of something and x plus something. Are there questions? Because this is it about historic information. What I would store in node then is values a and b such that I know that I should apply here from x to max of a and b plus x. Uh, and this is function that I should later apply lazily to things down. If there is a first query that changes something in the root for the whole segment tree, then I just update values a and b of the root. Later it will be pushed down. So this function will be applied. Uh, but also uh, a2 and b2 and those two are ho for historic max and that's it you don't need anything more you can combine functions so mm, just in w when you push something down in the leaf eventually you will also have function and depending on what was there in the leaf at the very beginning you would get some number this also means that there could be query that changes uh, there is last type for type 4 ix now assume that the initial value in of a of i was x we can handle this query as well because we don't in our formulas we don't use the value of a leaf uh, we actually don't merge anything because we don't have queries about intervals just updates of intervals mm, and in the leaf when we go to the leaf when we push everything down lazily we have there some function that says depending on the initial x what was the historic maximum here and what is the current value here so th this could be the query that we can still answer mm. Time for questions. The last thing I will say about segment bits will be some general way of thinking, as I mentioned before, and it is also described in the blog. How do we solve max of ax plus b using this? I can go, I can try going through that. What do you mean, how do we solve max? Are you asking how to... Because if if you're asking about this part, then my answer is in the leaf we have some values a and b and you just plug them for the given x. Or maybe you're asking about the historic max thing. So please specify your question. I will take a look in the blog to see if there's something more I should describe. So they also here say a little bit about this uh, maximum thing that we combine functions of type max of x plus a b with itself. Here they go through the formulas. I'm asking about this problem in general. Um, well, I'm not sure how to answer. I described the solution. The the solution is that here I said what I store in every node. This was only for historic info. Uh, I only store A and B in every node that describe a function that should be applied to everything 
make plus b do max i described here that each of those queries let's say add x can be treated as apply function apply function max of minus infinity and ai plus 5 this is simulating adding 5 every function with what we operate is described just by two values a and b and we say that x will become max of a plus x comma b and we can choose such values a and b that is shown here on this slide um, that they will simulate every query and the last thing is what they describe here as the main idea i don't think that it's a good thing to start but i actually find it kind of independent from the whole segment three bits but you should know what happens here they said that generally segment trees with lazy propagations or just recursive segment trees are like that we have a recursive formula that if interval the query interval and our current interval are disjoint then return and do nothing if we are completely inside the interval then we do something here let's say we increase something by five we minimize whatever and we return otherwise we are in one of those blue vertices on the path from the end of interval to the root to end, end of interval to the root we push lazy value down go recursively to two children and merge values from two children update the current value and a uh, more general approach that also works in segment rubies is that here we should say mm, not if we are completely in interval we should say here if we can in constant time do something here and we don't have to go down general version is if break condition what means nothing in this subtree will happen then don't do anything if then if there is thing that happens but only we can save it here save it here and return then push down uh, go recursively and update the example of that is problem where we change uh, given x we change values in some interval to this value modulo x let's say that x is 100 then uh, we figure that if some interval have values that are only smaller than 100 the operation uh, change value to this value modulo 100 will do nothing so then the condition break condition is either intervals are disjoint or the maximum value is smaller than 100 mm, th this is smarter what will allow us to do fewer queries and uh, in this problem we need the observation that every actually applying the modulo to something will decrease its value at least twice 170 modulo 100 is equal to 70 the, the, the formula we use here is a modulo x is smaller than a over 2 smaller equal assuming that a is greater or equal x so that something happens 99 modulo 100 is still 99 but if modulo happens then it decreases the value twice so every value can be decreased only log times to, because then it will become zero mm and uh, yeah, and smartly choosing when we don't have to go down because nothing will change and when we should stop here we don't have to go to children uh, will give us uh, good complexity and here analysis that every value will be changed at most to at most log times and to get there we need to get make log steps it gives us log square and this is a way with those break condition and tag condition where we should stop completely where we can put value here this is how you can come up with different solutions for problems like this segment three bits with minimum on interval i strongly recommend to you even if not today then someday read this block 
basically I covered what is here, but my uh, my proofs or complexity are different than what they do here. Still, they here mark some vertices, but they talk about the sum of depths. So I think my proof of complexity was easier. Uh, but still, you should be able to read something like that and understand the proofs. That's also a practice that will make you better in contests. Mm, but most important thing is to just implement task mm, task number one. Maybe there are some links here in the comments, maybe not. If there are not links, then you should still, in my opinion, implement task one and then just test it with brute force on small random tests. This way mm, you will at least know if it's correct. And make sure you understand proof of complexity. So this thing, and if you know if you want something extra, then go again through the historic information part. This is that part with uh, x plus a comma b, the maximum of those, and combining the functions. This is a bit more tricky, it's more advanced stuff, but I expect all of you to from now understand how to solve task one. Change something in and everything in interval to minimum of itself and x, or maximum, then it's the opposite, and query for the sum in interval. 